Hi everyone, my name is Nuria and this is my swim journey. Today I'm back to bring something that absolutely no one asked for, which is sleeves. Maybe you've seen it in my last video, it was about the basic top pattern. And in that video I said that I didn't want to do the sleeves in that moment because they are very frustrating for me. So this is a whole new video to explain the sleeves. When I was doing my research, I already found some videos that actually explain very well how to do the pattern and why the pattern is like that. So I'm going to be linking these videos down below and then you can also try it yourself. If you have a sleeve in mind, it has that weird shape. You have two things that in my opinion are important. You have the cap height, which is the length from the top of the sleeve till the bicep line. And this is gonna tell you if you have more mobility or less mobility on your arm. So if you have more height, you will have less mobility. This is going to be used for blazers and for things like that. And if you have less cap height, then that's going to be for a comfy fit. It's going to let you put your arms on the top of the world. The second thing I believe is important is the ease of the sleeve. So at the top of the sleeve, sometimes we give it a bit more length than the whole of our arm, just because we want it to be rounder or flatter. So if we have more ease, we're gonna have more of a round shape. And if we give less ease, we're gonna have a flat sleeve. All of this is going to make a lot of sense in just a minute. But for now, I think this is all the information you need about the sleeves. Let's go. Luckily to draft a sleeve, you don't need a lot of measurements, so that's good for us. This time, it's better to have someone helping you, but it's not needed that much. You're gonna need one arm length. So from this bone, with arm flexed, and then to your wrist. Number two, your wrist circumference. Around your wrist. Number three, your bicep circumference. This is around your biggest part of the upper arm. Gains. And finally, number four, you're gonna have to have your basic top pattern and you're going to measure around this on the back and around this on the front. And then you put them together and you have the armhole length. That's all we need for now, so let's get into drafting. To draft the patterns, I'm going to use first the method by Winifred Aldrich. I'm going to use this video that I'm going to link down below. And in the video, you can see that at some point she says add one centimeter ease. And I've done three different cases. In one sleeve, I added one centimeter each side. In another, I added 0.5 centimeters on each side. And on the third one, I didn't add ease at all. This ended up giving me one sleeve having a total ease on the top of three point something centimeters, another one that gave me two point something and another one that gave me one point something. This again is going to make a lot of sense later on and I'm gonna try to put some drawings down here so you understand a bit better. If we compare the three sleeves in a drawing, we can see that there's not much of a difference. You can maybe see that one is a little bit bigger and the other ones are a bit smaller, but you cannot see it straight away. For the second method, I'm going to use a video of the same girl and she's using in here the method done by Denik Chankman Lo. I hope I said it right, I don't know, I'll write it down. And in this method, she says that in the book, this person defines the cap height in high, medium or low. And then in the high, you add five centimeters to your length. In the medium, you don't add anything. And in the low, you subtract five centimeters from the pattern. If I put them all together here below, you can see that the cap height and the bicep line are directly related. So if you pull the bicep line, you're going to make the cap height lower. But if you push the bicep line, you're gonna see how the cap height goes up. So you make it higher. So they're related. For the first method, I'm just gonna use short sleeves because I think I don't wanna use that much of the fabric I have. And for this second method, I'm going to do full sleeves because I think it's interesting to see how long sleeve is gonna turn out with this method. With all this said, I think it's time for us to start sewing. Let's quickly 
quickly go through how to attach your sleeve to the body. First of all, before sewing or anything, you have to make sure that you have your notches in place. You're going to have the center of the sleeve. This is going to go on your shoulder seam on the top. Your side seams of the sleeve, these are going to go on the side seams of your top body and then the front and back notches. You're going to have them in different places to make sure that you don't put the sleeve inside out or upside down or whatever. Once you've made sure you have the notches in place, you're going to put two basting stitches on the sleeve from notch to notch. What that means is that you're going to set your stitch length to around four and that you're not going to have a back stitch when you're going to start sewing because later on you're going to pull on those. The basting stitch is going to look like something like this. After that, you're going to fold the sleeve with right sides facing each other and you're going to close the seam. And it's going to look a bit like this. Once you've done that, you have to take your bodice pattern and turn it inside out and you have to make sure that your sleeve is right sides facing you. So like that. Then you're going to attach the sleeve to the bodice and you're going to make sure that all the notches are in its place. So the top one, the side one and the middle ones. We're almost there. This is the most difficult part of the process and it's just pulling on the basting stitches to create little gathers. You can see that you create these little gathers here when you pull. You have to pull until you make sure that your length from the top of your sleeve till the notch is exactly the same one in the sleeve and in your bodice. After that, you can just Go to your normal stitch, don't forget this step because I always forget. So go back to 2, 2.5 stitch length and after that you just attach it all the way and you're going to have your sleeve. It's comparison time! Let's go! We're going to take the cup height example. I'm going to compare from low to high. If you remember when we took the low cup height, it was the right one, we subtracted 5 centimeters from the height of the cup. This caused that it was lower, but the bicep line was longer. This allows for more mobility, but at the same time, it's a lot of extra fabric. So if you can see, I can raise my arm over my shoulder, but at the same time, when I have it lower, there's a lot of extra fabric on the armpit. But it's very comfortable to wear. If we put next to it the medium cup height, in this one we didn't subtract anything. It was exactly the cup length that we wanted, it's exactly that. So we could say it's kind of balanced maybe. In this one you can see that the angle on which I can raise my arm is a bit lower than the one before, but at the same time there's still a lot of mobility. The wrinkles are still there, but there is a smaller amount of them. Finally, on the high cup height, this one we can already see that it's a bit tight. So in this one we added 5 centimeters to the cup length and this caused that the bicep line was too small for my bicep. So I had to adjust the bicep line and then I had to lower a little bit the cup height to make it fit my bicep plus 1 or 2 centimeters ease. The angle I can raise my arm is so low but at the same time there are absolutely no wrinkles which I really like. The problem here is that the bicep line was so tight to my bicep, this doesn't allow for flexing the elbow. If we put them next to each other, first we can see the angles. One we can raise our arm over our shoulder, the other one a little bit less and the other one way less. And for the wrinkles, the same. One has a lot of wrinkles and the last one doesn't have wrinkles at all. I think from here it would be very interesting to play around with bicep line when it's the smallest you can go for a sturdy fabric. But at the same time, I would say that if you have a tight fit, just don't use sturdy fabrics. For the ease, I can compare them all next to each other because there's not much to say. The lowest ease I had was one centimeter. This is the red one. Then I had two centimeters ease for the yellow one and three centimeters ease for the green one. This means that when we were gathering the stitches on the sleeve, the first one didn't have a lot of gathering to do, the green one had a lot of gathers. This causes that one is way flatter than the other ones. I don't know if you can see the difference that much, I guess that if you added 5 centimeters, maybe you would see it more, but already you can see it a little bit. The three of them had exactly the same cap height, so this resulted in a medium cap height I would say, and the range of mobility is pretty okay. Overall, this was a very interesting experience. What I realized is that when I was doing the video for the top patterns, I said, oh, I don't know how the armhole is going to fit when I put sleeves, because now it feels okay. But then when I added the sleeves, I would have liked the armhole to be a little bit bigger. 
I don't know if this changes for relaxed feet. I think when you have a relaxed feet, then you have a bigger armhole and then you will have less wrinkles because you will have more fabric to put around it. But for a tight fit, I don't think it's a good idea to add a low cap height sleeve. So you have to be very mindful on what you use and when. For the ease of the sleeves, I think it's okay to use 3 centimeters. I thought there was going to be a lot of gathers and I was a bit insecure because I hate gathering. I'm very bad at it, I don't know how to make them look exactly the same. But in this case, that wasn't that much of a problem. Another important thing is that you always should remember that you have a right side and a left side. When I was doing the sleeves, I didn't think about that, so I made six right sides instead of three right sides and three left sides. Just remember that you have to fold the fabric or just mirror the pattern. If I had to choose my favorite combination, do you know which one it would be? Would be the high cap rise and the medium ease. That for me would be the best combination. I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this comparison. I hope I see you in the next video. Bye!